maybe cover some of the ground that I covered in the actual painting process. It's kind of fun to see them side by side, which I normally don't do, but it's kind of fun to, to see where you went wrong and maybe where you went right. Um, you can see on the sketch on the right, it was about an 8 by 10 and I was moving quite fast. And it's really just about color notes and composition. I'm not concerned with drawing and making sure everything's absolutely accurate. It's more a, a getting the essence of the scene and getting home. I also want to cover a little bit about that viridian green that I mentioned and see if um, I can't show you in this uh, in these images kind of what I saw. So uh, first off, talking about composition, you'll notice that there are certain things in in the painting or in the reference that are a little a little strange, you know, like this rock just being a almost like a volcano. It didn't interest me in having it that way. So instead, I kind of came up and I, you know, cropped it as maybe a little square to give it a little bit more character. You'll notice, too, that in this idea of, um, of the light coming around the top there, when I started this painting, none of this light was here. This all was, was, um, wasn't present at the time. And as it moved over, I kind of worked with it as, it as it came, made some decisions. Even up here, this light up here was catching... A little later and so I indicated it in the painting as well. So anyway as I'm moving I'm, I'm more concerned about composition. You'll notice how I played this angle down here. So see how the angle is going right to left? Everything in the painting is carrying you this way and I didn't want you being so carried I wanted to find a way to bring your eye kind of back. So I've got this heavy direction this way right on all these lines I have some some direction this way and by by changing this direction here again what does it do it brings my eye back into the painting in kind of a focal area I mean this is kind of the whole focal area the the whole central area of the painting but the idea is to bring your eye back in so that was a little compositional change um, that I made the uh, same with over here on the right hand side there's another a cliff that was kind of in the foreground here that was coming down in front and so I created this cliff to kind of do that to keep my eye give me something to, to, to look to to bring me back obviously I changed the road uh, to more of a wash and ironically the road is the lightest thing in the painting okay we're looking up at the zenith of the of the sky so it's quite a bit uh, darker and bluer than we would see on a typical horizon line and this this asphalt is reflecting so much light that it became my lightest light so as I made my decisions throughout the painting for example these lights here in the sky they are not as light as as the road it doesn't mean I have to put that light that bright in the road or in the wash I kept the wash where it would typically be on sand but I did use the comparison game in the painting process to keep my eye, um, you know, revolved around around a value plan. So those are some of the compositional changes you'll see here too. I, you know, I enlarged this rock to kind of give it a little bit more overlap in front of the trees and play a little bit of that fun reflect a light. It's almost a greenish reflect a light casting in there. Um, so these are just little, you know, ideas that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of working fast and deciding what does work, what doesn't work. You know, I get home and decide there may be things I completely want to take out and rearrange. But using that, that on the spotter sense of um, impression, you can kind of design on the fly and, and kind of get a feel of what works and what doesn't work. And that grows with experience. Uh, I thought it'd be fun. Let's cover this green idea. Um, you know, when I was out there, I kept squinting and moving my eye between here, 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 and here. And as I moved, this felt more, had more yellow green than, say, the sky did. Obviously felt green against all this heavy red. Okay, it still felt blue against the yellow. So, by fun, let's, let's uh, spot, kind of spot check all this. And let's see if I can grab a little bit bigger uh, brush size to play with and let's color grab uh, some of this and see what happens so if I take that color okay and I put it against the yellow boy does it feel blue right doesn't feel green at all up here it's gonna look quite gray and quite dark 
Okay, it looks almost violety there. But against this red, look at how kind of greenish that go. And you say, well, it's not really greenish. Well, let's play fun. Let's put a real blue, a real heavy, uh, a strong blue up against there. Now look at how much that feels green. In fact, if I circle it, it starts to take on a greenish color, doesn't it? And, and that is because it's surrounded by something that's even more blue. If I take a red, it's a little more fun, and I take a red color, okay, and I put it up against there. Now look at how green that appears. See the green in it? So by, by isolating, I can see it, but if I don't have a chance to isolate it, then I use that comparison game. I'm constantly moving my eye from here to here to here to here. What's this green look like that? Well, I can see this is green with a lot of yellow in it. This felt green with a lot of blue in it, okay? And this obviously was very blue. So by moving my eye around, that's what's helping me see that there was a little viridian in it, ironically. In fact, what also helped is this little warm right in here, this little warm reflected light. Let's color grab that for a second and um, see what happens when we grab some of that. And I put that in there see how warm that feels and then this around the outside starts to feel green because the pink warm in that maybe if i put some of that down here you can see how this feels dead but up here it feels so warm so again that's it's this isolation and i just could not resist seeing this um kind of viridian viridian greenish in there versus a blue or a violet and it became kind of a corner note or cornerstone of the painting. In fact, when I get home in the studio, I may use it as a stronger element. You know, I might, I may carry it um, through the painting where it's almost like a vein of that viridian. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I wanted it to be an important part of my painting because it was such a unique situation and color. Now, if I didn't want that to be part of my painting, I could have totally ignored it and just painted it like the rest of the tones in the other parts of the cliff and focused more on maybe the trees, right? If the trees were the folk focal point, then I would have used this tone all through here and let it go. But I was just so en enamored with that color, that I thought, well, I'll play it and see if I can't bring it back and, and enhance it in a painting uh, in the studio for finish. But anyway, I just want to show you some of those ideas that out in the field or maybe one of those unique experiences where you see something and it really grabs you and it was kind of fun to chase it and see if I couldn't um, express the way I was seeing it. So hopefully this helps you guys in, in when you're out there painting, kind of finding ways to make the painting stronger um, and really isolating those things that, that um, create your motif. Okay, I hope that was helpful and um, I'll look forward to, to seeing you all on Facebook. Cheers. Hi. My name is Mitch Baird, and I'm over the moon about working with you. What an opportunity. 365 days to work at your own pace, receive personal feedback, and have access to a community of growing artists. That's invaluable. Aesthetics and the art of picture making is a lifelong pursuit, full of questions and stumbling blocks, but it's also full of wisdom and rewards. In the 25 years I've been painting and teaching, I have found that there is a crucial and particular way of seeing that every artist must grasp if they want to obtain wisdom. This visual perception is so important that it will be the starting point of this course. I will share with you visual tools that will strengthen your artistic eye and that in turn will fortify your knowledge and creative abilities. There are also certain fundamentals that all artists must know and use in order to find rewards and create successful paintings. Composition is of the utmost importance, as it's the core of visual communication. I will share facets of design, arrangement, and keeping balance. Drawing will feature concepts on proportion, shape, and linear perspective, as they are the forces behind two-dimensional and three-dimensional space. The lessons on value will present insights on how to see values clearly and how the form principle affects everything in our visual field. Lastly, I will cover color, the final frontier in an artist's exploration. I will share the aspects of building a solid foundation on how to see and identify color, as well as mix it and use it with harmony. 
No matter your level of experience, the information shared in this course will elevate your understanding and will assist you in your search for excellence. I look forward to helping you along in your journey as well as sharing mine with you too.